Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Miles Memories Weekly, episode 88. Miles Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week. How? Could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week I have tons to talk about. Games Workshop came out with a buttload of new miniatures. I'm mad at Star Wars and I bought a floaty tank, so I'm mad at Games Workshop too. But first I want to talk about this week's sponsor, Mantic, and their new Kickstarter, Terrain Crate 3. You all know Mantic, makers of great games like Dead Zone, Firefight, and Kings of War. Well, they have just released Terrain Crate 3. And it's all about making our wargaming tables epic while being functional and inexpensive. Terrain Crate 3 will consist of two crates, one tree-mendous crate filled with 45 pieces of grim dark flora full of disturbingly beautiful alien plants. With tall modular trees and plenty of small scattered terrain to really fill up a board, you can make the alien jungle of your dreams. And the other crate is full of sci-fi scatter with grim dark walls and plenty of crates and debris, you can make the classic ruined city game board all from this one box. All these pieces are made from PVC plastic, so the terrain crate pieces will be tough enough to handle even the most violent of war games. This Kickstarter also features some great add-on items like three new neoprene gaming mats available in all the sizes you need, with designs that complement the battlefields you can make using these two crates. Mantic has successfully fulfilled 20 Kickstarters, and this one is shaping up to be another slam dunk. So if you want an entire table's worth of terrain in one box, follow the link in the description below. Their Kickstarter is live now through December 6th, and thanks again to Mantic for sponsoring this video. It completely flew by me, but Games Workshop had some sort of an event. They seem to have these all the time, but they came out with so many new miniatures. So I just really want a quick one to get through them because I had some thoughts. First up, Games Workshop seems to actually be making Corn their own proper faction in Chaos. Kind of like how they made the Nurgle, the Death Guard, their own unique army. And so they say they did the same thing with the Thousand Sons. So finally, the World Eaters are getting their own their own unique miniatures, their own unique codex, and they are their own army separate from Chaos Space Marines. They showed off the eight bound, virtually unrecognizable from the mortal Space Marines they once were. So they are they are corn specific Chaos Possessed, and they look really, really cool. Instead of being like all tentacly or monstrous or kind of like John Carpenter's The Thing, they're just muscly, muscly, muscly dudes. And I am here for it. I think they look great. Ah, oh, the, the corn, corn is probably the least interesting chaos god to me. Like Slanesh has got her thing. Uh, I love Death Guard. I have a Death Guard army. The Thousand Sons are pretty cool. Nick thinks they're okay, um, but these guys, I like these guys a lot. Ah, oh, the the way Games Workshop painted them up is very clean, but that's just how they do things to show off the the model very well. And, you know, splatter a little blood for the blood god blood god on there. It's gonna look great. Some unique chaos possessed. I really hope that they let the new Chaos Possessed models be available in a Death Guard army because I really want to buy those models and paint them up all Death Guards-y, but I don't think you can currently do that. Also, they came out with the Jackals, spelt very uniquely, with some actual corn specific cultists, which is really cool that they're doing specific cultists. Um, I don't know if they'll do more of these. Death Guard already have their cultist type unit in the, um, the Pox Walkers, and then there's the just normal generic uh, chaos or um, the normal piddly humans for the regular chaos space marines. But now we have some unique world eaters cultists and they also look great. They've got their two close combat weapons and they're also as muscular as a piddly human can possibly be. These guys look great. And uh, it does make sure that you do get that human element inside of the chaos space marines because even though a classic Astartes Space Marines are nothing but Space Marines. Even the pilots of their vehicles are Space Marines for completely superfluous reasons. It's just dumb. It's so dumb that like a Rhino needs to be piloted by a Space Marine. Like Rhinos can't even go that fast. A normal human being could totally pilot a Rhino, leaving you one extra Space Marine, which is worth like a thousand human soldiers to fight on the battlefield, but no, we've got a Rhino, at least one, and presumably the gunner of the Rhino is also a Space Marine, and so you're wasting two Space Marines when those could be, ah, I don't care. But um, the, these, chaos cho these Chaos Cultists are great. I really, really like them. They look like they're gonna be a lot of fun, and it's good to see more Cultists because Games Workshop, their current Cultist offering is pretty lame. The sculpts look beautiful, but you just get one frame of 10, 10 Cultists in the box. All monopos, I think there's a little bit of options. So you can like maybe give one guy like a heavy stubber or a flamer because those are two special weapons available to Chaos Cultists. But overall, it's kind of a lame box. And if you bought a ton of them, you'd get a lot of duplicates. Um, I would, I would, wouldn't doubt that these are also going to be fairly monopos. But just being unique to your army 
I mean, you could even buy the regular cultists and these and kind of mix and match. And all of a sudden you've got 10 really interesting sculpts. So I dig it. They also showed off the Lord on Juggernaut, which I've always loved the Juggernauts. They're really, really silly. Like they're kind of like a rhino or a giant boar with a space marine riding on top. And they're totally mechanical constructs, which is perfect for the cast space marines. And I love it. I think they look looks really, really good. And it gives you a great non Angron uh, leader for your army, because this guy is obviously going to be brutal in close combat or if he maybe gets close enough with his little plasma pistol. But uh, yeah, you don't have to take Angron in every single army, which is great. Although you you'll eventually pick up Angron if you play uh, world eaters. So really cool to see that. And hopefully that means that Slanesh is right around the corner. I really want to see what Slanesh gets. I think they I mean they would actually need more because I feel like a lot of the offerings from the Chaos Space Marine Codex lean towards all of the gods, but they don't have that something that Slanesh has. Age of Sigmar has a lot of beautiful Slanesh models, so I would love to see some stuff as good as that brought over into 40k. After that, we got a goat guy for the Beasts of Chaos. It's just a goat guy. He's got two axes. He looks like he's having a grand time. Lovely looking miniature. Thumb, thumbs up. It's good. But really, though, the Age of Sigmar thing that caught my eye was the new Gl Gloomspite Gits unit. Gloomspite Gits, one of my favorite things in Age of Sigmar. They're just so fun and funny. And these guys are funny in a very unique way, where a lot of the Gloom Spite Git stuff is literally silly. These guys are silly by the virtue of they look kind of badass. Like it's a Gloom Spite Gits riding a wolf. And they 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 have actual armor on, they have shields and spears, they've got these grim expressions on their face, they're on saddles, they're war steeds but their steeds are wolves, which are not particularly big. So these guys are like knightly knights, super badass, but they're they're little, they're riding wolves. They're gonna look so silly. <laughs> like next to like the Lumineth Realm Lords, like elves on horses that are humongous. These guys are little, they're little tiny things. It's adorable. It's so silly that these absolute, they, they these kind of, these tiny goblin badasses are not that badass in the grand scheme of things, but they totally, you know, in their little green goblin heart that they are the coolest, coolest little gobos anybody has ever seen. And they are ready to fight for the bad moon and defeat all of the enemies of the, in the mortal realms. I like them a lot. They're just, they're just so funny to me. Yeah, I, I could I could see people being a little bit upset by the slight tweak to the design aesthetic of the Gloom Spite Gits, but I think it works because these guys are different than the regular Gloom Spite Gits, but they're different in such a way that it, they are still hilarious. It's goblins riding wolves. It's phenomenal. And they're good looking wolves. I mean, I always my mind always goes back to like the old um, Warhammer Fantasy Battles had an old wolf sculpt they used all the time that was like two pieces. Um, there are, you can get a pack of cyber wolves for um, 40k's space wolves, and those are they're fine, they're slightly derpy and fine cast. So, but these guys look great. I like them a lot. They're very, very funny. And Games Workshop didn't end with the gloom spite goodness there. For Warhammer Underpants, the the hex based um, t like little skirmishy tabletop game, really more of a board game. They came out with the Gnarlwood. Loon Knights, the Loon Knights, the Loons. Ah, uh, you got a beautiful Loon boss. I could see a lot of Gloom Spike Gets players just buying this to have this Loon boss, even though the current Loon boss is excellent, especially the Loon boss on Nasher Squig or Gnarl Squig. But these guys are just fun. Underworld is really great. I think I've bought two under underpants warbands. Um, I have the Daughters of Cain one and the Slanesh one that they came out with. I don't know if they sell it anymore, but it's just some really fun, characterful stuff. It reminds me kind of of like the difference of like when I started to collect some Malifaux miniatures. I love the game Malifaux by Weird, and you get these beautiful little boutique models that have very dynamic and interesting poses. It's feel, it feels very different to painting up like a squad of tactical marines where you can give, you can add a little something, a little extra finesse to each miniature. And that's what I see a lot with Warhammer Underpants. It is adorable. I mean, we've got 
a gabo shooting a squig out of a catapult that's made out of a door. Ah, uh, we've got a guy riding a squig. It's so much fun. One of the guys has a squig on a stick so he can just make it bite people. It's just fun. The gloom spite gets her fun. And I think that this is a great underpants box. Good old Warhammer 40k Necromunda Kador. One of that's one of the gangs in Necromunda got a new unit in the Ridgewalker. Ridgewalker, yeah. Uh, it's it's also kind of cute and silly in a weird way. It's um it kind of taken after the idea of like the uh, Imperial Guard Sentinel, a two-legged chicken walker, but they don't have like technology really. And so they've just literally cobbled this together and they have mismatched legs and you can see like the hammer marks where they have tried to make improvised armor for this thing. It's a really nice unit. I haven't heard much about Ash Wastes and like if people are enjoying that in Necromunda. I don't exactly know how it works. I've read the original rules for Necromunda and I have the starter kit that they made way back, not way back, not the old, old like Road Trader one, but the one that they came out with when it was just gang fighting in the city of Necromunda. And it's really interesting. It is classic skirmish rules where, you know, 10 guys versus around 10 guys. And they've introduced a lot of vehicles and new terrain, but I don't exactly know how it works in the game. Like, do you need these vehicles? How do the regular piddly guys get to the other regular piddly guys to like stab them with their space pitchforks? I'd love to know more about how Ash Wastelands is turning out, but they had, it's come out with tons of incredible miniatures. So very, very neat. Um, I would like to know more, but yeah, these chicken walkers are fun. But enough miniatures, you know, who cares about miniatures? Ark of Omens, we're getting some new 40K books. Yes, books, the thing I have been waiting for. I'm so excited to buy four very expensive books that contain this much rules and some lore. It's fine, I don't buy the books. Although uh, I do, I have enjoyed reading um, the Gathering Storm novels, which I think these are kind of the new version of the Gathering Storm. Um, I've enjoyed reading those on uh, Warhammer uh, TV, Warhammer, the Warhammer Plus app. You can read some of the older publications. It doesn't come with the rules, but it has all of the lore. So I'll get around to reading these one day. I, you know, I will, I will definitely purchase these at retail price and then read them. That is exactly what I will do. But yeah, it's books, who cares? Games Workshop shouldn't publish rules anywhere but the codexes, and even that's a problem. It really should all be digital. Even if you have to would have to pay a subscription service to get all of the rules for 40K, that would be better than the mess we have now of codexes, codex supplements, uh, the, the com, what are they called? They're, they publish more rules like once a year and then they have these books, which are gonna contain some more rules. So it's a mess, it's a disaster. Games Workshop, just get with the times and make it all digital. But they did show off one more miniature after that, and that is Vashtor. Not to be confused with the movie Ishtar, which is all I could think about when I saw the name of this guy. But this is Vashtor the Arcfane. And he's pretty badass, he's really cool. He doesn't even look like a Games Workshop model. Like it gives me real creature caster vibes, like those beautiful boutique miniatures. It's really, really cool. It is the Chaos Space Marine version of Call, Belisarius Call. He's just a weird gearhead who makes all of the cool stuff and he's awesome. Uh, I know it gave a lot of people's hearts a little flutter because in the article it did bring up the name the Dark Mechanicum which is a thing that exists. Um, I don't know if Forge Roll still sells any of the Dark Mechanicum miniatures, but it was sort of a faction for Big 40K. Basically, the um, it's like the Adeptus Mechanicus, but evil. And it's very cool, and a lot of people really get into it, but because they've never actually really had a model range or proper lore or anything, um, it's just never really amounted to anything. But this guy, I could see him bringing in kind of a new way to play the Chaos Space Marines much more mechanized with a lot more of the chaos, uh, chaos dinos really, but the, the chaos abomination vehicles that are all twisted amalgamations of like actual creatures, real life creatures like dragons and ogres, you know, real stuff. But I really like this model. It's very, very cool. It's a really good take on a evil version of Belisarius Call because Call is kind of shaped like a snail and this guy is not. He's a very tall, lanky man. It's great. It's very, very cool. Um, I wonder if his wings work. I mean, presumably they do, and presumably he just has some sort of anti-gravity device like in him. 
but I do like his really evil skeletal wings. It's a cool look, even if it's probably not the most practical thing in the world. This guy is really, really badass and kind of well painted from the Games Workshop's team. Like, I don't know, it just lo doesn't look like a Games Workshop model to me. It looks like a little, a little something extra. But that is all of the new stuff that Games Workshop showed off. Really a lot of stuff. I was kind of shocked. It all took me by surprise, but I love the little gabos riding the wolves. It's really, really fun. But speaking of things that are really, really fun, I was a little bit of a bad boy and I bought myself the, the um, Black Templar Comet Patrol and it came with the new Impulsor. This is my first of the new Primaris floaty tanks and I like it. I actually think it's fine. I don't love it, but I do like it. It is exactly like a Rhino, but uh, it's different. And as much as I like this model, um, it's really, really frustrating me in a lot of ways. There's a bunch of stuff that I really like and then a bunch of stuff I really don't. A lot of stuff comes down to the rules, but it is a perfectly nice little vehicle. I actually like the gravity plates a lot more than I thought I would. I think it looks pretty good on a Rhino type tank, but looks really, really bad on a Storm Speeder type airship. Like the Storm Speeder is literally exactly this model with two tiny little Buzz Lightyear baby wings. That's the only difference where this kind of looks appropriate. And I actually think that this type of vehicle makes a lot of sense for the Space Marines. I think that if this was available in like an RTS, in like Dawn of War, it would be so cool. Cause what I see this as is a very small transport that has, uh, that can do different things than a Rhino can. It floats so it can move over impassable terrain, even though it can't transport as much stuff. And in my mind, it wouldn't be as strong as, as tough as a Rhino. It could get, you know, get you over the hill and you could do these strike attacks on the enemy base when they thought that they were safe because they had some impassable terrain in the way. That would be really cool in an RTS. And I could see people building their gaming strategy around a tank like this, as opposed to something like a Land Raider or a Rhino. But in the game of Warhammer 40,000, where transports aren't really that big a deal, it's kind of superfluous and dumb. Also, that's not even getting into Games Workshop not letting anything go inside of Space Marine transports. I mean, most factions in the entire game, anything can go in anything. I mean, if you play Dark Eldar, anything can go in the Viper or the Reaper or whatever the, the boat, the, the, the pirate boat is called. But if you play Space Marines, very specific units can go in very specific transports and there's no mixing and matching. And so it makes it really hard to get good value out of your transports. Mo uh, only squatty Marines can go in a Rhino and nothing in Terminator armor can go in a Rhino. So Rhinos are really only good for transporting like Devastator squads, Back in the day, they would transport um, assault marines if you didn't want to pay for the jump packs. I guess you could transport tactical squads, but it's not really that good. Like tactical tactical marines are good for holding objectives, but they're not strong enough to like sit on a middle board objective and survive. And so only those types of units can go in a rhino. Land raiders can transport any, they have a little bit more freedom. They can transport terminator units or old space marines. But again, they're so expensive. They're like 300 points in game. So you're only stuck with those types of units. And now this Impulsor can only transport Primaris infantry, not guys in Gravis armor. For some reason, this has a transport capacity of six normal Primaris Marines. So that means only Bladeguard Veteran, really. And it does a good job. There's a lot of tournament lists that have Bladeguard Veteran and maybe like a captain with some artifacts inside of this thing. But that's it, like you wouldn't really transport normal intercessors because they're good enough that they don't really need a transport. Um, maybe hell blasters would be a good put in this because they can jump out and then plasma something to death. Maybe if you're a Dark Angels player, you'll never put Reavers in this because you're never gonna take Reavers in your army. <laughs> maybe if you're Space Wolves and you can bring the Hounds of Morakai, it might be useful to have them in this so that they can jump out and turn off a Psyker. Uh, you're never gonna put any of the Phobo stuff in this because they can, they can, um, they can deploy, they can forward deploy, so they can already be out and they don't need a transport. So this has an, is an incredibly niche transport and Space Marines in general are just totally just broken for transports. Everything should be able to go in everything. And I, I think it might just be the Games Workshop being lazy where they're like, well, there's over 100 units in the Space Marine Codex. And if we just say everything can go in everything, it's going to be a huge mess of rebalancing and points adjusting. So we're just gonna have 
only models that we came up with in the last five years able to go in the new transport and nothing else previously can go in them. So it makes it a lot easier on their end. But then on our end, the people who actually buy this stuff, I, I don't know what to put in the Impulsor. I mean, maybe my Blade Guard veteran or my Sword Brethren for the Black Templar. But other than that, eh, and transports just aren't that good in general, because even though games of 40K take a long ass time, the 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 role playing that you're doing during that game, the actual battle isn't much. Every unit moves six times. So if you are dedicating a transport to doing something, you're saying that that unit is not going to be doing anything on the board for one to two turns, which is not that great. Uh, it's a cool model. I do like it more than a rhino. I also suspect that in the in the world of Warhammer 40,000 28 millimeter heroic scale, rhinos should be huge. Uh, looking at these two little these two little hatches, I assume that these are about the same size as the hatches on a rhino. And rhinos have a lot of room on either side of those hatches, especially with the treads. Whereas this is pretty tight. Um, and so I would expect this to be actually a much smaller vehicle than a rhino, especially because it can only fit six Marines. And this could probably actually hold six uh, Primaris models. It's probably scaled down just a little bit, but the rhino is scaled down dramatically. I would love to get a new rhino that's like big. It would kind of ruin everything because now people would have, you know, there's millions of rhinos out there in the world. And all of a sudden they're going to be only half the size of the new rhino kit made by Games Workshop. But if they wanted to kind of fix these all of the problems with the Space Marines and their dumb transports, the Land Raider has got to get Bane Blade sized and the Rhino should probably become as big as at least as the uh, the Gladiator tank or some of the bigger um, Space Marine tanks. And I know that there's a there's a Primarist floaty tank that can hold 10 space, 10 normal Primarist Marines, not Gravis Marines. Why can't why can't you just say a Gravis model is the same as two regular intercessors and therefore you can fit three Gravis models in a repulsor and all of a sudden you've opened up so many more options for list building and for reasons why I would actually want this thing. Ah, <sighs> Games Workshop. I also don't mind all of the guns. I don't love the new Primaris thing of having tons and tons of guns on everything, but you don't actually have to put on this gun or the, um, and so now you're stuck with just Two guns, which I think is fine. I mean, uh, regular rhinos can take two storm bolters or a storm bolter and a, uh, a missile launcher. So I think it is acceptable. I like this model. I think it's fun. Another thing I really don't like about it is you're meant to plant this on an 80 millimeter round base. Garbage. That's so dumb. Number one, because you you can you can't do any interesting modeling things with that base because you've only got a quarter inch of room under that vehicle, and so you just have to put on a layer of sand and then plant this thing on top of it, which is about 80 millimeters wide, so you're not gonna see any of that base. I think what I might do is I might just glue on some Legos and just have some little feet so that it kind of looks like it's floating, but it's not on a dumb round base that you can't see. I don't like it. I'm very conflicted. I think it's a very neat vehicle. I'm gonna play with it a little bit in games, but uh, Games Workshop, just, just in 10th edition, please just take a look at all of the Space Marine units and make them all actually synergize. Let Primaris go in a drop pod. No one's touched it a drop pod in like four and a half years because, I mean, you can still pop Devastators out of it and have it be somewhat usable, but they're not as good as the, as Hellblasters or the um, the Meltagun guys, the Annihilators. So, eh, I, I like it with a million asterisks. Games Workshop, please fix. So anyway, why am I mad at Star Wars? Well, I'm not really mad at Star Wars. I'm mad at Asmodee because they have just announced a new miniatures game, a new Star Wars miniatures game based in the Clone Wars, but they already have a miniature war game based in the Clone Wars, and that's Star Wars Legion. I love Star Wars Legion. It's my baby. I have so much models for it. And so I was really, really perturbed, annoyed when I saw that they were coming out with a new game and I'm even more mad that I'm kind of digging it. <laughs> so, so Asmodee and Atomic Mass Games, they make X-Wing, they make Star Wars Legion. They, I don't know if they make Armada anymore. I think they kind of dropped it because it's so expensive and not as much fun as X-Wing. Um, but they have Legion. They have a great, uh, great tabletop game. And I think this new thing is Kill Team. It is called Star Wars Shatterpoint. It's based on the 2008 Clone Wars cartoon, which is cool. Uh, I love the 2008 Clone Wars cartoon. And to my eye, 
the miniatures look like they're in a slightly larger scale, which I really hope they are. It's annoying that there's two different war games with two different model ranges. It would be equally frustrating if they were the same model range, I suppose. Because why? <laughs> Like you have, so now you have, if you want to play Shatterpoint, you have to buy an entire box of battle droids to use two for your game of Shatterpoint. But it does look to be a little bit more of a kill team type game. If the models are in a larger scale, that means that they're going to be easier and more interesting to paint up. And looking at the starter boxes, they each come with a small number of miniatures and the miniatures do look really good. I am a huge Star Wars fanboy shell. I do kind of want this stuff. The good guy box comes with three clones, one of those being Captain Rex, who is available to purchase for Star Wars Legion. And it comes with Anakin Sky Potter, Ahsoka Tano, uh, Bo Boko Khan, Bo Khan, the, um, the Mandalorian general, and uh, two Mandalorians, although one of them looks exactly like Jango Fett, and I would be tempted to just have him be Jango Fett, but it's really cool. And then the bad guys come with a super tactical droid, three battle droids on a single base, which is kind of interesting. Asajj Ventress, Darth Maul with robo legs, I think, and uh, three of the uh, Mandalorians when they were working with um, with Darth Maul. And so it does appear to be like taking a lot more inspiration directly from Clone Wars, where Star Wars Legion takes from everything, also including the Clone Wars. And based on the trailer, they showed off a couple, a uh, bunch more miniatures that they haven't released yet. Um, uh, Luminara Unduli um, and her Padawan. Um, Barris Ophi, uh, Count Dooku, and they all look to be halfway between the art style of the animated Clone Wars and live action, which I think is kind of a negative. I would have liked them to go full cartoon, full cartoon, and that would make them very different from Star Wars Legion models. And I also just like how the cartoon looks like it's very silly, but I think it's really good. I think they probably didn't because some people really like the cartoon art style, but some people don't. And the people who do like the cartoon art style are probably fine with normal live action too. So I don't fault them for going, for taking kind of a middle ground between the two, but I would have liked pure cartoon. Um, it'll also be interesting to see what kind of rules this game comes with, because I could see enjoying, and I could see other people enjoying a more kill team, couple of models aside skirmish game, as opposed to you know, you you know, you get to take Ahsoka in a war game a lot easier with Star Wars Shatterpoints than you do getting to take Ahsoka and then like 50 other clone troopers and tanks and speeder barks and speeder bikes. So is there room for this game? I don't know. Asmodee and Atomic Mass Games put out a, uh, a statement saying that uh, Shatterpoint joins with Legion, X-Wing and Armada as not a replacement for any of these amazing Star Wars games, but as a new unique option for players looking to dive into the exciting action of the galaxy far, far away. I doubt that if it turns out Shatterpoint is just way more popular than Star Wars Legion, they wouldn't drop Star Wars Legion in a heartbeat to put more emphasis and money into this new game. I do think that Star Wars Legion is probably safe. It's not necessarily being replaced by this new game, but it is weird to have one company making two games with a lot of character crossover. And they're both war games that you have to buy the models, put them together and paint them. It's just a weird thing. And I'm frustrated that I kind of want to buy it, <laughs> but I don't know, it is weird. I love Star Wars Legion. I'm going to conti continue to collect, build, paint and play Star Wars Legion. I might dip my toes into shatter points. I'm very conflicted. I don't know how to process these feelings and emotions I'm having, but it does look pretty cool. But I am very skeptical of Atomic Mass Games and Asmodee that they're not just testing the waters to see what new Star Wars product that they want to pivot to, because I mean, they bought the Star Wars license. They want to see a return on that investment. They're they're willing to do stuff. To, to try to make the money where like, you know, we always crap on Games Workshop, but they love 40K. That's all they got. If 40K goes under, they got nothing where, I mean, they publish dozens and dozens of different game systems. So they're, you know, they're playing around with Star Wars, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. They, you know, they won't shed any tears. I mean, I'm sure there's people at those companies who absolutely love Star Wars and are loving these games, but you know, the, the people at the higher ups, they don't, they don't care. So I don't know, Shatterpoint is interesting. It's unique. Actually, it's not unique. It's exactly Star Wars Legion, but scaled up maybe a little. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
But you know what I do know is great? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have tons of miniatures, both miniatures and terrain, ready to populate your war games and all hosted by comics, games, and things. We also produce one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and we give them some helpful critiques and ideas of how to improve their painting. We also do a live Discord hangout every week where we all hop into a room and we chit-chat the night away. And we have a new tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines. So you will see the your name in videos or whenever we get battle reports up and running so that you can have your name, Mr. Stinky, on a Space Marine. We also have merch. Link in the description. Also, if you're thinking of picking up any miniatures in the near future, might I suggest Valhalla Hobby. They have a great online store with pretty good prices and lots of that new Slaves to Darkness box. If you shop with the code EOB10, you can get 5% off your first purchase. It was a really, really fun week. I do, I, I do like this vehicle a lot. It is fun. It was fun to put together and I'm excited to paint it. But Games Workshop, come on, do better.